mateys, and welcome back. <laughs> uh, this is Mad Chat episode 405, featuring a review of, I bet you could probably guess, yes, that's right, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. I think this is an amazing game. I had so much fun with it. I can't wait to get into it here with you. I mean, it's got pretty much everything you wanted and more, in my opinion. Got a few little problems, but if you want the short review, it's just go buy the damn thing. Preferably using my link in the show notes to the GOG site, because I think you really enjoy it. But uh, anyway, we've got about an hour's worth of coverage here, so without further ado, here is Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. And here we go, folks, with Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. <laughs> Hell of a great game. Uh, came out just a couple of weeks ago, I think May 8th. Available right now on GOG, goodoldgames.com. I'll put a link in the show notes so you can <laughs> go ahead and buy this and skip the review if you want. Uh, 50 bucks around that. Uh, I think it's uh, 50 bucks uh, very well spent. You might even want to spring for one of the collector's editions. Not to say it's uh, perfection by any means. There's definitely some problems, some issues with it. Uh, but I think overall, it's a really fun game, especially if you like the, uh, the first pillars. And you remember those uh, Black Isle classics, games like Baldur's Gate, or uh, Pillars, <laughs> what's the other one? Uh, Planescape Torment, you know, that kind of comes to mind. I think this game channels that uh, to a certain extent. But anyway, in this video, I'll just jump into this. We'll play maybe the first uh, zone, I guess, and then I'll show you some of the later game. Uh, just in brief, though, I'll tell you, this is kind of, a, to me, a mix of... If you take that first Pillars of Eternity game and add on a Sid Meier's Pirates dimension, I think you kind of get the, a hint of what this game will be like. Uh, the pirate thing really worked well for me. Uh, but anyway, let's get into this. I'll show you the intro movie. And I'll just warn you, if you haven't played the first one, you might want to just stop the video because there's some spoilers here at the beginning uh, about what happens in the first one. But uh, otherwise, just kick back and enjoy the intro. A world where mortals live, die, and are reborn through the turning of the wheel. The cycle of reincarnation watched over by the gods, and made possible through pillars of a mystical substance known as Audra. Five years ago, you traveled from your home to the Deerwood, a nation that had waged war against the incarnated god of light, Aethys resulting in his destruction. The country suffered from a plague of hollowborn, infants born without souls, that many believed was punishment for killing a god. In an ancient, secluded ruin, you witnessed a secret ritual that inadvertently transformed you into a watcher, one who can see and speak with souls. The ritual also gave you horrible visions, waking nightmares of a past life that threatened your sanity. To put them to rest, you pursued the man who had led the ritual, a seemingly immortal agent of the gods, known as Theos Ix Arcanon. With divine assistance, you confronted and defeated Theos. Ending your visions and resolving the Hollowborn Crisis. In so doing, you also learned the great secret that Theos had protected. That the ancient Empire of Anguith had transformed themselves into gods. Your visions finally put to rest, you retired to the castle of Cad Numa, built atop a massive statue of pure Audra where you ruled in relative peace and prosperity. Yeah, so like I said, if you haven't played the first one, that this little summary here is probably not going to cut it, uh, but it's a nice refresher if you, if you have played the first one. Made a nice story. You fixing up that old keep, lifting the curse. Must have told it a hundred times. But something got to gnaw at me. Thinking the spirits there weren't really at rest. That maybe the gods weren't finished with us. I used to dream 
that when my god came back, he would forgive us. Last the trouble with dreams. Sooner or later, we all have to wake up. So all I can say is I hope we had some good homeowners insurance. <laughs> Oh, yeah, bye-bye keep. You know, really good riddance. I never really liked the keep. After in the first game, all those long loading screens to go to the different rooms. I'm, I actually like this idea of the mobile base that we'll get into here with the ship. Uh, we're not quite done, though, with the intro. There's still quite a bit of exposition left. The in-between of life and death. Follow your memories. You have been here before. You have seen past the shroud. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. A watcher sees souls, knows their pasts, and the souls see them back. A dubious honor, inheriting a fortress both broken and cursed. What is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked? The gods aren't real, but something else entirely. Something created by people. And did you ever consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? Let the world see. Let them decide what to do. I thought that bit was cool. Kind of a Planescape Torment vibe to it. Probably one of the first things you're going to want to do is install this to your solid state drive. I found that made a huge difference with loading times. An aged dwarf shares this strange floating platform with you. His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. Still, the dwarf's well-practiced habits have left telltale tracks of a welcoming rictus across his visage. Yeah, see, I'll go ahead and say here that not all the writing holds up well. I mean, this the, the level of description here it just seems like a <laughs> like a creative writing workshop with really over-eager students or something. Uh, I mean, do we really need like that much description of this guy's face? I mean, we don't even ever see this character again. I see there's quite a bit of that here at the first few parts of the game I noticed quite a bit of overwrought description mainly uh, the dialogue though is relatively snappy and pretty good voice work some unusual talents in their voice acting cast you hear some so sort of southern accents some country uh, voices and of course the pirate voices thank you for joining us watcher of Cadnua. the god a pale slender neck rises from the gorget topped by a hollow face. The milky skin stretched across it is delicate and translucent. Yeah, it's almost like this writer is being paid by the word or something. I mean, good lord, get on with it! ...arrangement of cards on the table between you. With each movement, her armor squeaks and groans as though bearing an incredible weight. Your brush with the divine has drained you of your powers, fractured your memories. Look upon these cards. They represent the core. I thought this bit was really neat. Kind of an homage to the Ultima series. Remember the fortune teller, uh, Terra deck, creation, character creation sequences of some of those. Uh, this is not quite as involved, but you get six different options here. Basically, what kind of uh, character did you play back in the first game? You can, I guess, basically simulate uh, the, the set of decisions. Some of them are quite funny. The everything bad. <laughs> Uh, one of my friends is playing that one. Uh, I'm kind of intrigued by some of these options. I'll I think I went with Benevolent Soul uh, the first time I played this. I might 
try something different for this uh, little playthrough we're doing here. Yeah, this is everything bad. You did everything wrong. <laughs> Everybody, you killed all your companions. And everything was a, went to hell in a handbasket. Not recommended for <laughs> new players. <laughs> Okay, so we went with the fair and balanced. We'll be playing a Fox News anchor. <laughs> I just want to shut up about that dwarf's rictus. <laughs> Although you could have broken your pledge when you defeated Theos at Sun and Shadow, you did not. Admirable. She delicately places a card on the table. A you had need of the gods once before. Now it seems we have need of you. The being that occupied Ognua's statue beneath your castle was the dead god, Aeothus. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. Though Aeothus stole a large fragment of your soul, you were strong enough to survive the onslaught and enter the in-between. You and he are still connected. He has chosen a body made of living Audra, perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including you know but neither is your body truly alive your lungs draw breath your heart pumps blood but your flesh is as soulless as a hollowborn that is until i return you she delicately places a card upright on the table the art depicts souls flowing out of a pillar of audra good before you return to Aeora, you know this is just this is an awful lot of exposition right here at the beginning. <laughs> I really don't recommend this to game designers. Uh, you know, if you go back and play Baldur's Gate one and two, you you get into the action relatively quickly, and they they fill in the story as you go along. Uh, this game just uh, a ton of stuff, and I think it would take a lot. Of, you'd be asking a lot of a player, especially somebody new to the series, to, to sit through all that and read all that but anyway <laughs> finally we get to our character creation sequence and there's quite a few choices here I love this part uh, you've got what one two three six options there and some of these are new or at least unique to the pillars universe I guess what would you call it the <laughs> this world uh, this Orlan I guess this is about as close as they get to a hobbit or halfling kind of a little wookie wiki <laughs> we'll get uh, there. Of course, the human is a pretty good-looking uh, character model. Uh, this series, of course, also has the godlikes. And, uh, these are—I don't know what to make of this. It's, it's kind of weird-looking. Uh, elves, and of course, and dwarves. Those are your standard ones. And then you got these—how uh, do you pronounce that? Omawa, Omawa. I think these are pretty cool characters. There. Uh, associated with oceans and since this game is basically set in the ocean and set of islands I thought I would choose this ocean race and then you got some subcategories of those you got oh that kind of looks like the guy from Planescape again uh, the nameless one I think I'll go with that coastal and you can see how each one has subtle differences in terms of the uh, bonuses they get or maybe the penalties and this really does make a difference. I will say this about this game's story. I mean, there are frequent hooks in there to these decisions. So if you choose a different race, a different sub-race, you'll definitely see that coming into play. It's not just an insignificant decision. It's not like there's a right and wrong answer to these, but I think it's kind of cool. It gives, you, it gives it a great replay value, right? Uh, you go in with a different class, different race, different... <laughs> uh, sub race i guess and then you got where you're from on top of that uh, so you're going to get a lot of different dialogue options i mean they must be just i don't even want to think about how many lines of dialogue are in this uh, and here we have the classes and again most of these are pretty typical day D, &D type stuff wizard rogue etc uh, but uh, the, again the pillars universe we get some unique stuff to this series the cypher i don't think i've seen that anywhere else chanter which i I guess is more or less like a bard. And the rest of these, I guess, are fairly uh, standard. Uh, I would say if you're going to play this, uh, you might you could go back and play one of these more standard races later, but I always think it's fun to pick the, the stuff that's kind of unique to the series that you're playing. So I'm going to go with this. Well, I'm trying to make a choice. Chanter or Cypher? 
Let's see, ciphers. I'm going to go with them. So then you see we have these three subclasses. And these are kind of cool. Uh, I usually didn't pick one, pick one of those though, because it's good. they've got a negative. <laughs> you get kind of a bonus, but also there's a penalty. And it's a little hard for me to tell, you know, how big of a difference this would make. That's the problem. A lot of these games, you, I, you know, you don't know very what you're getting into. So you're making all these decisions, and then later on, you might be thinking, man, it would have been, <laughs> it'd have been so much better off going Ascendant instead of Soul Blade, or whatever. Uh, so again, I guess you you could look at that as uh, making the harder to create a character, but on the other hand, it's kind of fun. It definitely gives you a reason to go back and replay it. I don't think you could screw it up so bad you wouldn't be able to beat the game, even if you intentionally made <laughs> bad decisions. And it looks like these guys get spells or abilities and quite a few to choose from there. Uh, another thing about this game I liked is every time you level up, it's, it's a really big deal. Uh, it's not that, I forget how many levels there are, maybe 20. Uh, but every time I found that it was, I would sit and study it for a while, look at the options... Now look at all the different abilities you could choose from. I don't think it's possible in most classes, at least the classes I played, to get everything. You have to uh, make some concessions. Uh, the wizards are kind of cool because you can pick up grimoires to fill in the, the gaps for the spells they didn't learn. Uh, not, you know, I have zero experience playing a cipher though, so I'm just kind of uh, muddling through this. Uh, they do give you some direction here. If you look at those little stars there, you can see what stats they recommend. Looks like uh, the ciphers are dexterous and perceptive, or perception dexterity. And then the silver stars, I guess, are less important. And again, I wouldn't... Some people want to just jump on a guide, character creation guide, copy something. I think it'd be better off just, especially if it's your first time, just experiment, play around, you know, don't worry so much about having the best possible character. At least if you're playing on the difficulty level I am, which I believe is classic or standard, I forget what they call it, it's not that hard. I mean, you'll definitely be challenged a few times, but I feel like uh, usually I could reload two or three times and get past something. Let's see, what was your job? Aristocrat, dissident, drifter. And again, lots of <laughs> options, and you might look at this and I just assume, well, this is just a little buff and that's the end of it. Oh, no. <laughs> it will come back again and again and again. There'll be special dialogue options like laborer. I don't, you know, certain situations where that might come into play. Uh, I think I went scholar last time, so I'll go aristocrat this time. And here we go with the weapon proficiencies. And this one, it kind of threw me for a loop here. But the idea here is, uh, it's not like you would think in most games where you get a big bonus or maybe you can't even use a weapon unless you train in it uh, it's not like that in this game instead it's just if you get if you take one of these proficiencies it gives you a special ability you can use with that type of weapon so like this quarter staff there if you do this one you can get a uh, increased deflection at the cost of recovery so it'll slow you down it's again that carrot and stick idea yeah you're gonna block some more blows with that uh, but at the same time, uh, you're going to be slower with it. So you don't even really necessarily need to have a proficiency. Um, you might just want to just pick whatever here. Uh, I didn't really find a lot of those uh, proficiencies all that awesome, really. Um, I tended to use them anyway, just because I, I feel like, well, I had the proficiency, might as well use it. Uh, but I'm just not really sure how that trade-off, if it's necessarily worth it. I guess it would depend on your what you're doing with a character and type of monsters you're up against. That's another big theme of this game is shifting weapon sets depending on the monster. Uh, the monsters will have weaknesses and strengths and maybe a, maybe you're not having any luck with a bow uh, so you switch to your hammer, let's say, or, or mace and might uh, do more damage with that. And here we go, just kind of customizing the look of our dude there. This is one of the things that just drives me crazy about these games. <laughs> Why the hell? Uh, I think this is true of the first one too. If you look at that portrait, I can't find, I can't get my character to look exactly like the portrait. Uh, I don't know why they don't just uh, make that portrait there uh, using the same model instead of being a painting. 
We got some different voices. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> I am Batman. Oh, this is kind of neat too. I forgot about this, but we have our poses. Oh, uh, <laughs> roguish. <laughs> oh, so, oh, so sassy. That sass. Oh, that might be a little too stoic there. Uh, sullen. <laughs> he just looks cold. <laughs> I'm just going to go average on that, I guess. And you could name your character. Of course, it doesn't really matter. So there's our nice character sheet. Now, I love the aesthetics, the design. You know, look at that summary sheet there. I mean, it looks like it's some, a page out of, like, the Dungeon Master's now Manual. I do not give you this title lightly. When the time comes, you will have the power to reveal the souls that cling to you. To open the gateway from the in-between to the waking world. Find Aethys. Learn his plans. When I have cause to talk to you, I will summon you. With a quick gesture of her hand, you feel a sh A chime. Do not fear, Harold. It will not harm you unless you choose to cross me. I trust it will not come to that. The dwarf nods, contorts his face with his odd smile, and gestures to a new door. Oh, a little ominous there. Yeah, this is cool too. I love the way that these uh, these things you're walking on, those rocks. I mean, that's a really cool effect. <laughs> I will say this though. <laughs> There's no way in hell I would ever walk across a floating boardwalk like that. <laughs> Man. I mean, it kind of gave me a little vertigo just playing it. I mean, just watching it now even is kind of making me feel a little queasy. But yeah, the artwork, I mean, it's just amazing, just the, the detail on this. I don't know how well you can hear the music, but they really nailed that too. Some really sweeping scores, and when you get on the ship, you can get some pirate shanties that are even cooler. I mean, who doesn't love a good pirate story? I mean, come on. <laughs> Look at that ship. Oh, how well I know that feeling. <laughs> yes, crashing waves. Oh, man. His gasp was mid puff. <laughs> Get on with it! Oh man, if I was an editor, I'd just be like hacking almost every other line out of this. There we go. So you can see how some of these choices are red. It means I can't use them because I didn't select the right options. The steward of Cadnua. Cadnua has been destroyed. Aethus possessed the statue of Maros Nua and rose from the ground, consuming the souls of all nearby. It is only by the exceptional strength of your soul that you survived. And even then, just barely. The further Aethus withdrew, the weaker you became. We chartered this ship and followed him to the Deadfire Archipelago. I know not how, but it seems he has retained a piece of your soul. And proximity to it has brought you back. How could you know all that? You've been faking on us. Misfortune's brewing topside, we... Migrants fires the captain stirs. An older man with ale-sour breath rubs his bloodshot eyes and stares at you. Engrim, the smell of drink on your breath could wake the very dead. Now what's this about? Pirates. They're demanding parley with you, captain. I know this is asking a lot, but you better arm yourself and get on deck. Should be some gear in there. I know somebody worked really hard on all that descriptive text, but I just gotta say, you know, so sometimes it's better just to leave things to the player's imagination. All right, here we go. Let's get rid of that and put on our male shirt. And you see how we can switch between the weapon sets there. I always find it's kind of hard to argue. If you give me a choice of anything and then a gun, <laughs> 
I'll always go gun. I mean, uh, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight and so on. I don't know if it's quite that, quite that straightforward in this game, but I just find myself very hesitant <laughs> not to reach for this big honking. Uh, what they call aquabus, aquabus, and there's a little sheet there. Now this is I uh, some writing I really appreciate. I love the detail. So just about every item in the game, I think pretty much every every item, you can right click on it, bring up a lore sheet. Uh, sometimes you got two or three paragraphs uh, just on a very simple item. Now this is really impressive here too. A lot of the complaints about these kind of games are the AI. You know, people, oh, the, the guy keeps running into battle or he's using the wrong spell. Or, you know, have to micromanage everything. But uh, this will let you get in there and really just edit the hell out of it. And you can really customize your AI however you want. I didn't really mess with it. I found the defaults, yeah, weren't perfect, but they work well enough. But, but again, even if I don't use it, I like to have that option. If I wanted to, I could go in there and, and tweak it. Lost and alone in the storm. I'll be taking your ship now, if you don't mind. And especially if you do. Well, at least he asked. I am a gentleman of fortune. Give her up easy, and I'll see you get a swift death. It'll be bloody and agonizing, sure. But at least it'd be quick. Now you're getting it. Listen up, mates. I'm off to spear me a bigger fish. One with sharper teeth like. I'm trusting you lot not to cock this up. Don't damage the sloop when you take it. Play with the crew if you'd like, but don't bring me any prisoners. None that are alive. You had bad Love that. A little snappy little dialogue there. Game's really starting to pick up at this point, kind of getting away from that heavy, flowery, overwrought prose, and <laughs> it just started to be more fun. I appreciated that. I wish we could have gotten to this sooner. Well, here we are in combat. And you can see it's it's a little complicated. It's been a while since I played the first game, so I'm not sure what is identical or what's changed here. Uh, you can turn your AI off and on. You can pick what spells you want to cast. I guess I don't have enough focus to use my spell yet. And then I can turn my special ability of my, my gun on and off. And I have special watcher abilities. And this is... <laughs> they're just getting started. I mean, there'll be a lot more bells and whistles as we go. But, you know, just look at the... You know, the composition of this scene. I mean, we've got the ship rocking, we've got the water back there. Pretty frenetic combat. <laughs> really, really enjoying the gun. I think that was a good choice. Takes a little while to load, but it's kind of nice just to be one-shotting pirates. All right, now we get to the meat of the story. That's a nice graphic there. I like the way they did these uh, what I call choose your own adventure sequences. You get the picture, nice artwork. It kind of makes you wonder if a different person wrote the the text in these these segments because it's very different. It has a very different style and flavor. Uh, much better, in my opinion, than the, whoever did the uh, sort of in-game descriptions. Uh, this is really nice. You get a good choice, good strong choice to make right off the top. Do you save the guy, your crew member, or do you save the chest? And you think, well, uh, what's in that chest? Uh, so the first time I chose the chest... Let's <laughs> spoil it. <laughs> uh, you make your own decision, but I'm sure most people would probably pick the, the crewmate. And here we go. It's uh, Divinity Original Sin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only teasing you. Yeah, I was asleep during most of that <laughs> introduction. <laughs> no, come on. It's not that bad. Ah, the chair lady. Even the developers are worried that we'd be asleep. Come on. The dead fire is spotted with islands, some quite small. 
The good news is that if the storm hasn't spun us round entirely, I'd say we're in charted waters. I believe the Valian Trading Company operates in the region. I really like these games that are set on islands. You know, I'm also playing Divinity Original Sin 2 at the moment. Uh, it's just nice. I think that a lot of us would like to go to a place like this for a vacation. I always hated the playing Skyrim for that reason. Just because I'm sick of that snowy wasteland. Like, man, I don't. I would not want to go there in real life. Uh, why am I subjecting myself to a virtual version of it? There we go. So we got to get the ship patched up, explore this little island, find some civilizations, and it'll give you a pretty good idea of the scope of the game. But, I mean, yeah, you got to... I was reading some stuff about the development of this game, and apparently they had to cut a lot out. Uh, which is kind of surprising because, uh, you know, considering how much is in here, oh, uh, wow. <laughs> I'm getting like six, seven dialogue options every time. Again, it's probably a little overkill, in my opinion. So maybe those cuts weren't so bad. Uh, here's Adair, and this is another cool feature. I wish more games would do this. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm kind of thinking maybe Divinity does it too. Uh, but you, you have these uh, pre-made characters, but you don't just have to take them as is. You get a little choice about, uh, you know, what do you want them to do? Do you need another fighter? Do you want another uh, cleric or thief? And that's kind of cool because it doesn't lock you so bad. Now, basically, the problem with a lot of these games is if you, when you create your character, you don't want to have a duplicate <laughs> NPC, you know, two rogues or whatever. Uh, but maybe you really like that rogue uh, character and you'd like to have uh, have him or her in the party. Uh, so this is cool. I like the way you can just say, well, I need the thief or I need the fighter. That's pretty cool. And there are, are quite a few different characters you can recruit. I think you might have five total. Um, verify that for you before we're done with the video. Uh, but quite a mix, and you can swap them in and out fairly painlessly. Uh, they automatically level up with your other characters, so you're not necessarily locked into the same set the whole time. So again, very smart design decisions. Gives you a lot of flexibility. And then, of course, uh, if you want to replay it, you could even have the same characters, but have them do the different roles. Or choose the different characters. You know, usually in a game like this, there are certain characters that just annoy you. <laughs> uh, so you can avoid that problem here. Don't think I can pull that off. And I'm just running around collecting the herbs. I, I don't know why I do this. Every time I play a game like this, if, if I can pick it up and loot it, I pick it up and loot it. <laughs> Fighting off motherless raiders one moment. Flung into the freezing depths of Andra's bosom the next. Aye. My Aye. Just poor bastards that a little excitement is good for the heart. I guess this guy had something to do with the first game. I just don't even Some remember. <laughs> but when Margaret hears it, Captain, oh, she knows you're yeah. filled with a fire. Can we go back on the ship now? <laughs> Yeah, something about these Orlons. I, I pray for the dent to test ourselves anew against the pirates. We'll nail let them slip away a second time. Yeah, this is a really good voice actor. I'll start the fire. I'll start the fire. I mean, who doesn't want to talk like that? I mean, come on. <laughs> talk like there's a whole holiday based around talk like talking like a pirate. So, it's fun times. I don't want to get off uh, there quite yet. Yeah, so again, just really loving the scenery here. It's nice tropical, the little birds flying around. Now the water looks great. And I have the, I have everything toned down for this video, but I mean, I'm playing this. You could play this in 4K resolution if you have the, the means. What yeah, happened? Let's see. Storm? That's strange. You think a man would recall a storm? It's like, it's like someone cut away a part of my memory. There's just this big black hole. It's weird. I give you a sense there the range of voice talents they brought to bear on this game. But I don't see anything at all. Just you. Suppose that sounds nice. Quite a few southern characters. Follow you then, shall I? All right. 
Still seeing ghosts, huh? You know, this is a Josh Sawyer. He directed this, and <laughs> I, I have him on record somewhere saying that he he's disappointed that he had to put in, in the combat mechanics. He thinks that it should have just been all story and text driven, I guess. Yeah, I just can't disagree more with him on that. I be honest, could do with a lot less of the story and more combat. I was able to calm one of the boars with a spell for a time. It's a lot of setup for pretty simple battles. <laughs> Every fight must be significant. He has not. I will make for the campfire. This is the guy I saved, by the way. Be of any use. Be careful in there, Captain. Yes, I'm guessing he's going to be part of my crew once we get the ship repaired. So a lot of little things like that I love about this game. That's it. You gotta grab this guy. You must gather your party before venturing forth. <laughs> oh, there you go. You're waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, they, I guess they decided to go with this uh, uh, female narrator. Again, I'm kind of blanking on I don't remember if the first one had a, uh, a male or female doing that. I guess we're not the first to head this way. <laughs> I got shushed. Uh, let's see what we got. Yeah, we're just inside this uh, this cavern here, cave, I guess. And again, you can almost feel the the cold air bro uh, blowing on you. I mean, it's just uh, I just can't say enough about the artwork of this game. It's just beautiful. Now this is this might turn out to be a little complicated. You see, he's got a sword with a skull through his head. I think that means he's a little above my level. What is he? In? It's not telling me what level it is, but I'm pretty sure that's what that skull means. Sometimes you might go up against something with two or three skulls on it. And this game is it's fairly open-ended. I mean, this is all pretty straightforward here at the beginning, but you can certainly get into a zone that's too high level for you. Which, I like that. Uh, thankfully, the journal's clear enough that you don't feel like you just <laughs> where do I go? What do I do? It's, you know, it's not like that. Uh, but if you want to get off the beaten track, hey, you know, you, you can do that. Yeah, let's see, getting some stuff. And, uh, one thing I found is I just never had enough money in the game. I mean, eventually you get enough money, but uh, you certainly don't want to be passing up stuff that you could sell later on. Just fighting some skeletons. Boom! <laughs> Man, that's... Oh, I love that. Boom! There's a shotgun blast to the face, skeleton. <laughs> I've got it. Yeah, this is definitely scratching that Baldur's Gate itch. I mean, <laughs> this is just. I mean, if probably by this point of the game, you're like, "Yep, yeah, that was fifty bucks well spent." I, I can see I'm going to enjoy myself here. And uh, now here's the the camp seed. Or the way the food. Oh, there we go. There's there's one with two skulls on it. Now this is probably going to get messy. And see, he's coming for me. Somehow I aggroed him. And I guess uh, my aider there is not going to be able to get it off. Ooh, thing hits hard. Yeah, the tutorials just keep popping up. I guess I should have turned that off. This isn't looking good. Now I can try to run away from him, but then he'll get a free swipe at me. It might be worth it. He's just gonna keep on. Let's see if I can get this skull shot cast. Yeah. No, he killed me. <laughs> it's not that big a deal as long as the uh, Edder survives. A dare. You know, and you can switch to whichever character you want if you want to control one. I usually found myself later just controlling the wizard the whole time, even though it wasn't my character. I just found that's where my human intervention made the most difference. Uh, so here, yeah, we, we pick a food or a drink, and then we uh, rest. And you can also use this, some of this stuff for your crew later on. Uh, they'll need food and drink as well. And it usually has a bonus on it. Sometimes it has bonus and a penalty. I think the ale and the rum 
both have a dexterity penalty, but who cares? <laughs> I'm not going to be a pirate in a pirate game and not drink rum and ale and grog. I mean, come on. Uh, let's see. There's... I've got it. What is it? Eric? Eric? I don't think I've well, come across that play. before. That R looks about as oh, as check this out. Got a little ring of uh, minor protection. So a lot of the gear I found, you don't ever change. Uh, you can actually upgrade a lot of the... Like, these NPCs will come with their own armor and weapon. And usually, you probably just want to stick with that and upgrade them. Rather than uh, giving them new weapons and stuff. But There he is. <laughs> Scabbers. Ah, bosun. Than trying to find a way past without losing a leg or getting a face full of poison. Yes, yeah, so I've got quite a few ways to handle well, this. You can use your perception. It's just bats and stinking corpses in this cave. If you find anyone else, then I'll head that way myself. I found that the perception is actually a really nice thing to have because you're always finding little secrets. Just disarm these traps, and again, another cool thing is you actually, when you pick these, uh, or disarm the traps, it'll add them to your inventory, and then you can actually use them against the the enemies. It's it's a really neat system. I didn't really uh, get into it as much as I, you know, probably should have. I think that would be a fun way to play. You could sneak around, lay your traps, uh, maybe hit one with a ranged attack, and then just let them <laughs> run across your traps. Yeah, so there we go. Bear claw trap. Be quiet. I'll see if I can set one just for fun. But yeah, this is uh, this is really working for me. <laughs> Finally, just just put me in a cave. Uh, you know, the only thing that would make me happier is if there was some rats in this cave. And unfortunately, uh, again, I hope this wasn't <laughs> intentional. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, they took away the rats. There's not a damn rat in the game. Uh, we got bats! But, uh, You know, sometimes I think these guys just try a little too hard to, to be different, to be cool, or... They're so afraid of falling into cliches or whatever it is, but... I mean, come on. No rats. You gotta have a giant rat in the first cave, guys. I mean... Ugh. Yeah, but, but look at this. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about. That that page there looks straight out of, like, the Monster's Compendium. I mean, this is a freaking bat. And we've got something like three, 400 words of text on it. And this, uh, a lot of these stats are question marks. If you fight more, then that'll get filled in, and you can, uh, you know, go back and read the uh, more detailed descriptions. But stuff like that, I think, is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's probably didn't cost all that much to put it in there. And it has a really nice touch. And again, if you want to <laughs> read three paragraphs about sea bats, <laughs> go for it. Uh, if you don't, don't. Uh, it doesn't matter. I just think it's cool that it's in there. It just shows you that they didn't just slap some, you know, creatures in here without giving it some thought. That's kind of what made D&D &D so cool anyway, was all that stuff you could read. Yeah, here's another one of these. What I kind of a choose your own adventure sequence, and this must have been a really low check because uh, I had zero. I think <laughs> zero. <laughs> I was at athletics, and I still managed to get to swim through that passage. And there's me another chest, some pistols. Probably never hurts to make sure you got some healing pots on everybody. A lot of the times, I mean, you, you get into some of these battles and you'll just start taking damage so quickly. But all you have time to do is quaff a pot, if you're lucky. And just looking here at all my skills and effects, I mean, you could really just dig into this. And I think it's a really well done system. Or at least I could put it this way, I could tell a lot of thought went into it, I don't... They'll probably be tweaking it, I suppose, as the as the reviews start coming in and they start hearing from uh, the players. But uh, I, I, there's a couple times where I felt like, man, I just 
Yeah, you know how it is. You're playing a game like this. You can't get past a certain battle. You're yelling. You're screaming. You're gnashing your teeth. But no, no one dare speak poor of his precious animancy tech. Yeah, this is somebody from Benway's uh, crew. Creeps. You feel it too, right? Like it's looking straight through you. But anyway, a certain level of frustration kind of goes with these games, right? And it, when you're finally able to get past it, <laughs> it's just such a catharsis. Anyway, you want to bend with? Haven't seen you for. Tell you the truth, though. Uh, this game to me is a lot easier than Divinity: Original Sin 2. Right, you know? Well, with you being the only other thing around and all. I can give you a hand with, uh, spirity stuff. You know, I don't... It sounds to me like... No, I'm, I'm thinking now, like, what did they cut out of it? You know, especially here at the beginning, you're finding these uh, dead crew members, and you're kind of telling them to come with you. It almost seems like they had this whole... Like, there's going to be a whole sub-quest where you're, like, in the spirit world, and you have a spirit different companions for that <laughs> uh, that would have been kind of cool uh, I don't know if that's what they planned or if that's just kind of a minor thing but it sort of seems like that's the road they could have taken no I just love these I love that you know it's the little things it's like you bring up that big map and you can see where you are the little <laughs> green circles you can see your guys running around <laughs> I don't know what it is For some reason I just adore that Right, let's see if I can get uh, this. I'm going to try to see if I can get this trap. So there's the uh, the skeletons. So let's see. There's my trap. Got a couple types there. So let me see if I can slip up there. I think they're going to spot me before I... I can't tell if I actually got it laid. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So I can just try to run them across it. Yeah, there you guys. Look at him. <laughs> oh, he's in the cart in the trap. Boom! Yep, yep. <laughs> this is it. This is it. And if you're not on GOG right now, download this thing. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you're setting traps, shooting the skeleton's heads off with a frickin' uh, black powder gun. Let's see, we got a chest over here. What's in that bad boy? Body picks. Man, I'm glad they just... <laughs> I've been trying to play that... Uh, oh, what is it? Kingdom Come Deliverance. And they got the, the god-awful lockpicking thing. This mini-game from hell. Literally designed by Lucifer himself. Uh, nothing like that here. All right, so we're done out of this beautiful cave. I would probably would have paid money just to take a little <laughs> tour of that cave. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Okay, so I think we're pretty much done here with this intro. Let's get off the island and then I'll uh, switch over to the other game. Let's see what the sea combat is like. Oh, wait, there's still one portion I don't think I've... Uh, Uncovered yet, it's the ship. Yeah, so there's our Defiant. And it has run aground. We'll have to get it fixed. And of course, that will occupy <laughs> quite a few hours of enjoyment. Oh, I'm gonna girl up there with her leg trapped under a rum crate. Let's see. I guess we shouldn't ask why one of the options isn't to open said rum barrel and drink said rum, thus making the barrel lighter. <laughs> yeah, that would have been my solution. Pastanaga. Like, even the, the slang in the game, like pastanaga. You know, there's a little story about it. <laughs> I mean, this is something like J.R. Tolkien himself, I think, would have been impressed with the amount of uh, detail and lore that went into this. I mean, they, they really just gone above and beyond. I mean, they, again, the idea that this is apparently a stripped-down version, not nearly what they wanted. I mean, my goodness. 
That's you can just carry her down. Shoot a sing me with that barrel and grip. Okay. Uh, so I think we're done here on this island. Let's uh, get out of this and take a look at the uh, look at the map. There's kind of a, I guess maybe two or three different gameplay modes you have. Uh, the, when you're walking around exploring, when you're on the sea, and then when you land on the island, there's a kind of overland uh, mode. There, we're just leveling up my characters. It was cool too, I like this idea of the party assist. So, maybe your character doesn't have any bluffing skill, but if you've got another character in the party that has a high bluffing skill, uh, you'll be able to benefit partly from that. Yeah, just looking at this, I'm used to playing with uh, Adair as a... I played him as a rogue last time, so now I'm <laughs> he's got completely different options. Uh, which is cool, certainly cool. Uh, later on, you'll recruit. I guess you can recruit. There's a paladin. That's probably what most people would choose for their tank. Uh, there's a character called Shody that reminded me a lot of the character Maggie from The Walking Dead. <laughs> I don't know. I saw I was reading some forums and some people were complaining about they didn't like her voice. They didn't like the character. Yeah, so again, just you know, your personal preference. I thought it was rather. Uh, rather charming, but then again, I am from the deep south. All right, there we go. So much to learn. Yeah, I forgot to tell you about that. There's this empower system. Uh, so that's kind of, I, I feel like, sort of the fudge mechanic. <laughs> if you get in over your head, you might be able to tap that. Uh, the empower, and sometimes that can make the difference. Usually I was using it. I completely forgot about it most of the game, and then... I got into a tough battle, and then I was like, what what the heck? Uh, and then rediscovered, I guess, this whole empower system. It's like, dope! Oh! Yeah, so if you run out of your skills or use up everything, you can tap that, and it'll bring it back. You can use it again. Or you can make a sort of supercharge one of your abilities. Uh, so I think that's really cool. I like that uh, choice you can make, and it certainly comes in handy many, many times. I like to, usually when I play this, I'm, I'm a little bit, I don't know what to call it, but a uh, perfectionist, I guess. I hate, even if I survive a battle, you know, if, if a two or three characters are dead at the end of it or wounded, now I usually reload and try again, but uh, that's certainly not necessary. As long as just one person survives, uh, you can always just rest and, you know, get rid of those wounds. There's very little permanent stuff. Although, that said, I, a couple times, I, uh, characters got killed. I guess they got hit so hard or they were already wounded or whatever, but, you know, <laughs> that sucked. Of course, you can always go back and reload, but uh, that's certainly a thought if you were only playing that Iron Man mode. Uh, that you could easily lose your whole party. All right, so here's, here's the Overland view, and this, this part reminded me a lot of the old uh, Heroes of Might and Magic series. And if you remember that, you got the little... Uh, locations along the map, little points of interest you can go visit. You get these choose-your-own-adventure segments. Uh, sometimes they'll be uh, little zones. And that's the part you really want to be careful, though, because some of these areas will be way too advanced for you. Probably not at this stage, but what do we have here? Uh, a broken wagon. Yeah, there's certain... <laughs> I'm just realizing, like, there's a lot of religion in this game. It's, it's like it's written by theologians. And there is this complex pantheon of gods, reincarnation, and uh, this god changed, and the, the new followers versus the old followers. I mean, it's it's pretty... Uh, if you're really into religion, I mean, you, you're going to have a ball. Uh, success. There we go. Just applied the bicep to the wheel. And we got some silver fittings. <laughs> you know, I didn't. I, I never really play as a jerk in these games, but man, they give you a lot of options there. If you just you could just rob those people. I don't know. Any of you guys ever play like that? Just choosing the most dastard, dastardly option every time. I don't know. Just 
Maybe I'm just a good man. I'm such a good person. I can't, even in a virtual sense, I can't bring myself to be unethical. Alright, so here's the first town. I'm gonna move on here because I don't want to spoil. We're kind of getting into spoiler territory here if you actually want to play, but uh, you can see this is the first little town, and there's several more. I think there's probably uh, at least three major sorts of zones, and they have a lot of quests and locations. But yeah, so that we're getting into a little bit of the uh, politics going on in this world, or these islands, and the Huana, and the trading company. It's, it's very reminiscent of, I guess, the something like the East India Company. Now you will do the same for historically. I'm not a pirate. Oh, yes, I am. Anyway, folks, let's uh, move on here. I want to show you a little bit of the later game. Uh, so where's the party I got all the way through the game with? And I'm on this... Uh, ship called the Fawn Ferris. You can actually buy bigger ships. Uh, I was reading that it's kind of up to you. You could just stick with the default ship. You can also swap out like cannons. There's different cannons, different ranges, different uh, abilities. Yeah, so look at the, look at all this. You have crew members you can put where you want. Uh, they can get wounded and you can swap them out. So there, there's quite a bit to this seafaring part of the game. It's now, I'm not going to lie and make out like this is uh, <laughs> Sid Meier's Pirates level, uh, you know, ship simulator, pirate simulation, whatever. Uh, but there's still quite a bit here uh, to play with. Let's see if I can get into a battle here and show you what that's like. But I think those are uh, the good guys. Let's see who do I have a bounty on. Now, that's another nice thing about it being non-linear. I was just going from island to island exploring them and occasionally I'd be killing these uh, uh, you know bad guys <laughs> for lack of a better word <laughs> uh, they'd be up to no good on these islands and uh, they would just take their heads put their head in a sack when I was done I'm like what's going on with that and then later I came across a bounty hunter or somebody giving me uh, giving out bounties and I was just able to cash all those in back boom 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 <laughs> went up like uh, three levels and got a lot of gold out of it, so I love that. You don't have to get the bounty and then go kill the monster. Uh, if you just come across the monster, it'll go ahead and take the the item you need to turn in the bounty. So it's just little stuff like that. I think is is a good touch. I know there's a lot of a lot of other games that do that crap. Sometimes they'll even let you kill it and then you can't turn in the quest because you didn't get the quest first. <laughs> uh, so I love the way they handled it here. This is the way they this is the way it should be done. Like, I don't have any mission to kill this stuff up here, but uh, who knows? Maybe I'll get an item or something that will open up a quest, or maybe I'll come across a quest giver later. You can see some of these uh, weapons that they've got. Most of these, most of the times I would just keep their default stuff. And, now, there's an upgrade system. You have to find certain items and pay a lot of gold, uh, but you can really make their these weapons more powerful. Which is another nice thing I like because, uh, you know, sometimes you find a, a sort of low-level weapon, but you just really get kind of attached to it. <laughs> you like that weapon, and you don't want to just give it up. I mean, I just love this this two-handed, uh, what was it, the Morning Star? There's my pet. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> There's pets. Uh, yeah, so you can have a little poodle following you around or lots of different options. I don't think there was a rat one. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure those guys are messing with me. <laughs> uh, but not putting in the rats. I, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, it's just a real disappointment. But I guess a poodle. <laughs> you know, how much you want to bet that, that damn uh, poodle thing is... Uh, I bet you one of the designers, maybe that's Josh Sawyer's dog. <laughs> Wouldn't put, and I swear to God, too, they put Tim Kane in this game. Uh, one of the NPCs, it's not a character, it's just a character, you can't play him. Uh, but it looks so much like Tim Kane. I'm like, uh... <laughs> that is, uh, not a coincidence. Why this, uh... Man, that's an unfortunately shaped spell zone. 
You know, I think I might be in a little in over my head here. So this is what I'm talking about. I mean, these characters are pretty much maxed out. I think they're all level 20. And they're just getting their, their uh, asses beat. The problem is, of course, these things are charming. My own dudes, and they're probably... My <laughs> my own guys are a lot more powerful than these uh, spirits are. So that's a big problem. Now, if I had my ducks in a row, I would have some kind of, I guess, a will potion or something and try to be boosting up their willpower or whatever they call it. It's got this kind of rock, paper, scissors system with this game. I think it's willpower, uh, resolve, uh, reflex. There's three or four of them in it. You know, they're good against some things and worse against others. But yeah, this is uh, not looking too good. I really watch the, the the charm person. That is a lot more serious of a problem than you might think. Eh? They are just doing it constantly too. Then the cool items. Sometimes you'll find these items that let you summon monsters. And the cool thing about that is it recharges automatically. I think you get it once per battle, so you can really use it a lot. I'm really glad. A lot of these games, things will have charges. You might only be able to use it once. And if you're anything like me, you're always saving it for that when you really need it. And then, of course, you finish the game and you're like, crap. <laughs> I got like 50 of those things. And I never used them. Uh, so this, it, it makes you want to use it like this figurine, just constantly using it. So I don't have to worry about uh, needing it later or not being able to. I mean, look at all the abilities this rogue has. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to survive this one or not. I Really just kind of walked in here. I should have been a lot better prepared. And I don't know what the deal is with Shodi. Good God, I can't tell you how many times I had to reload because of her. She just, I don't know, she just pisses people off. <laughs> she's always pulling aggro. Always, uh, and she's like the first to die. And I guess it's probably because she's the, the healer. Maybe they're targeting the healers, but... God. All right, anyway, I'm not sure what's up here, but uh, I'll, I'll move it forward because I don't want to spoil this. Uh, this is just a little, a little island, you know, and you got I don't know how many of these uh, scattered around the world. Uh, you can just go explore whenever you want, uh, see what's there. Yeah, there's how you could, uh, uh, there's how you could upgrade your, your artifact weapon. Uh, but it's really cool. Anyway, let's uh, move forward a little bit more. I want to show you the sea combat. All right, so I've uh, tracked this person down. One of the bounties. See, there's a shipwreck up there. I could explore. <laughs> you hear the pirates singing or the crew. All right, so here we are. And this this the little interface took me a little while to get used to. Uh, you can basically just try to ram in there and board them right away, which is probably really the best thing to do. <laughs> to be honest with you, <laughs> saves a lot of time. Uh, or you can try to do the ship-to-ship -ship combat. And so you see there in the middle, uh, I'm that, we're the ship in the middle, and it's telling us how far we are from the other ship and showing you their position. Of course, on these ships, the cannons are all on the sides. So to fire, you have to uh, turn first. And depending on the ship you're in, that could be quick, could be take a long time, a couple turns, <laughs> a couple of turns to turn. Uh, it's kind of a strange expression. Uh, but you see what I mean there. So he's not in a very good position. He's kind of uh, facing away from me. So I probably won't hit him very much. I can go ahead and try anyway. You can see the percentages there on these various guns. You could decide maybe it's not worth shooting all your guns. You might save some so you can shoot again later. Because it will take a couple turns to reload those. There we go. We're firing all these various cannon. <laughs> missed everyone. <laughs> and a lot of this has to do with who I've got on deck. You know, I can swap out uh, the crew, put uh, some, they'll all have bonuses. You know, some of them are better, more experienced at, say, cannons uh, than others. So a lot of little ways to finagle this. And I can even, in mid-battle, decide, hey, I want to swap out some crew. It might be worth a turn to do that. You see, I'm trying to land some blows on this thing. Of course, when you do a uh, fire, you can decide whether to use the regular old cannonballs. 
You can try to use, I think it's uh, chains to take out their cells or grape shot. Try to shoot the crew. There we go. Let's try this again. I see that one cannon still reloading, so I can't use that, but uh, one of them has a 64% chance. I'll try to hit with that. There, hit. Raking hit. Two damage. And then you can see our resources, their resources. My ship is a lot better than theirs. They're a lot stronger anyway. And so I've got a lot more hull damage I can take. And it looks like I'm pretty much more powerful across the board, but I think he's got a speed advantage. Being a smaller ship, so I probably want to try to take out his sails. Keep him from zipping out so quick. Of course, if you can cripple their sails, that makes it also harder for them to turn around or jibe. Uh, so it might be taking them four or five turns before they can shoot at you again. So yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, we're just looking at text. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of illustrations. I mean, this is a long ways from uh, the sort of pirate combat you get into in Sid Meier's Pirates. But, you know, there's enough here. You know, maybe if they'd have had more money and time, they would have done more with this. But uh, that said, the system they've worked out here, it's it's fine. It's, it's, it's fun. You know, there is a surprisingly amount of uh, tension, too. I mean, when you fire those guns, <laughs> that little moment of, ooh, am I going to hit? Am I going to get lucky? Are they all going to miss? Especially when they're shooting at you. That's when it really comes into play. And I've uh, lost the game a couple times uh, due to that, these battles. Uh, they'll ask if you want to surrender, but I mean, <laughs> I'm going to reload at that point. I'll say, too, some of those options, even at the very beginning, some of the dialogue options, if you say, for example, uh, no, I don't care about this mission, or screw you, <laughs> it's just game over. You have to reload. I thought that was fun. So if you're just clicking randomly, you'll end up uh, screwed pretty quickly. So you're trying to close the distance there is probably the best strategy. I just, I never had the patience to try to sink one of these ships with cannon. I'm not even really sure what would happen if, if uh, you do that. I mean, do you still get to the, get their stuff? Do they surrender at the last minute? You know, something else too, the game, it kept acting like you'd be able to have this fleet of ships. You know, like you'd be able to capture a ship and either use it yourself or bring it back and sell it. Uh, but I don't know if that's one of the things that got cut. Uh, but all you can do is, is loot the ship. It just disappears. But, you know, that's alright. You know, I don't know how much they wanted to push this whole pirate's angle. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, the combat, it's its really its really uh, satisfying. Yeah, there's a morale so we can share the coins with the crew, and that's probably a good idea. <laughs> Quite a bit of grog, and uh, a lot of loot in that. That's good. Sometimes you can even get special artifacts. Anyway, folks, there you have it. Uh, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. Really, really enjoyed the game. I would say uh, graphics easily go five out of five on that music five out of five the the uh, writing on it is kind of varies I think the story is a little bit you know too complicated for, for this uh, <laughs> or at the very least some of the writing is a little overwrought at times it's a little much to take in uh, on the other hand the depth and detail of the lore is just it's really really impressive i mean you like i say you got three paragraphs <laughs> on a sea bat as uh, so if you love reading uh, you're really going to appreciate that uh but you know it's not really what it's not really my thing uh the uh gameplay is probably the strongest thing i uh, had a lot of fun sailing the ship around combat was some, sometimes it got a little too much to handle uh but usually you could go back reload and just prepare a little bit better and get through these uh, battles. This is a, <laughs> apparently run into a lich here. 
Uh, so I really should have prepared better for this fight. But, it's, you know, you can save at any point and reload, so no big deal. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go uh, just overall with this game. Uh, I would say... Uh, I'm kind of torn between maybe a 4 and a 5. Now, I will say... Hey, when I got this game, I started playing it, I didn't put it down. <laughs> Every chance I got, I came back to it. I did pretty much all the sub-quests, all the side-quests uh, I could find. And uh, had a great time. So, you, know, you, you can compare it all you want to and say, well, it's not as good as Baldur's Gate or whatever. But, uh, I think it's well worth the 50 bucks. I think you have a lot of fun with it. And, yeah, it's got a few flaws. Maybe some things they wanted to put in that they didn't get around to for whatever reason. Uh, you know, it is what it is, and it's a lot of fun, so... Uh, go check it out. It's on, as I said, it's on GOG. Good old games. Uh, 50 bucks on there. And it's on Steam, but I mean, come on. You like Match Chat, right? So you're going to buy it on GOG using my <laughs> referral link. <laughs> and I greatly appreciate that, so... Uh, I'm gonna cut out of here before you get to see my party destroyed, and then I have to suffer that embarrassment and eternal humiliation. Anyway, <laughs> uh, go get the game. And that's all for this week's episode. Man, am I having too much fun, maybe? I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Sorry it took me a while to get the uh, this done, but I had to play the game. Yeah, that was uh, so much hard work. I had to go all the way through Pillars of Eternity to <laughs> Deadfire. Uh, that probably wasn't necessary. I'm, I'm probably going to be bringing uh, you some live stuff uh, coming up here pretty soon. I've got some fellows working on uh, 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 Legend of Grimrock style games. I think it would be fun. Uh, and also want to do it. I never did. I got some more reviews I need to do. I need to catch up with uh, BattleTech and also uh, Divinity of Original. Wait, <laughs> Divinity Original Sin Part Two. I don't think I ever covered that one. So uh, those are all great games that deserve episodes. Uh, but anyway, thank you very, very, very much for your support of this show. You make it possible. Uh, there would be no Matt Chat without people like you uh, stepping up, uh, going to that Patreon site, and uh, signing up for that buck a show. Uh, that's all it takes to keep, <laughs> to keep these uh, episodes coming. And I really, really appreciate it, guys. And, and also, I put some more of those uh, coins in the mail. These are, I got some uh, Matt Chat coins that go out to the uh, $100 and up uh, uh, pledgers. Uh, so if you have entered that uh, column recently, just let me know. Give me your address and I will ship you your coin. All right. Uh, what about that news for the Matt Cave? So quite a bit of news to cover here. The first one, uh, I'm not really sure how I feel about this. It's kind of good, kind of bad. I want to get your take on it. Uh, but it concerns that Bard's Tale 4, Barrows Deep. Uh, they posted a new update. Uh, Fargo did over on the uh, Kickstarter page for it. And they're basically saying, you know, you should probably remember they wanted to have the Bard's Tale trilogy, the original games uh, that came out, I guess, in the, in the early 80s. Uh, but they wanted to update those and release them again. It's kind of a little bonus uh, for the new Bard's Tale game. Uh, they were contracted out to Old School, which of course is uh, Becky Berger uh, Heinemann's uh, company and uh, you know, good friend of the show. Uh, but anyway, I guess things didn't work out with them, so they went with Chrome Studios <laughs> instead. And, uh, you know, I guess they, I don't know really what happened. Hey, let me just take this off. <laughs> it is surprisingly hard to read with a Hard to read an iPhone with an eye patch. I don't know how the pirates did that back in the day. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, let's see what was I saying. Uh, yeah, so they went with this new company called Chrome Studios, and they've released some uh, some of the stuff they want to put in there. They're saying they're going to up res the original art, but keep it in the same theme. Now you can see looking at the pictures there what they're talking about. Yeah, it looks all right, I guess. Uh, they're talking about uh, audio, updating the audio for attacks, spells, and more. And I don't really remember a whole lot of audio <laughs> in the original trilogy, so they got quite a lot of work to do there, I'm sure. And then quality of life improvements, such as the auto map, tooltip pop-ups in the UI, etc. So, sounds like they got the right idea. 
Now, it's a shame things didn't work out with the uh, old school. Okay, anyway, this is from Shane. A uh, wild homebrew console looks straight out of Fallout. <laughs> uh, this is a device, uh, it's called the Ocelot, and I think I've had this guy's stuff on before. It does these kind of wacky uh, console mods. Uh, but this one is uses an oscilloscope. Oscilloscope, is that how you pronounce that? And sound that comes from electrical currents. Uh, instructions are there to build your own because he's not mass producing these things, but it looks like it would be a great project for you as you're sitting there in your bunker waiting for those rad levels to go down. <laughs> I wish I was joking, but who knows these days. Uh, then a uh, good old Stig wrote in a couple items. Uh, actually, put in quite a few items. The first concerns this uh, No Man's Sky coming to Xbox One. And the cool thing about that is they're adding the multiplayer. So uh, they wrote up a little, little commentary from the producers on that. It says, you'll now be able to explore the universe with your friends or bump into random travelers. You can help friends stay alive or prey on others to survive. Tiny shelters or complex colonies that you build as a team are shared for all players. Fight as a pirate or a wingman, etc., etc. Uh, so it sounds like they're basically releasing the game they probably should have released back uh, when they did the initial one. But anyway, that's pretty cool. Uh, Stig's excited about it. I haven't really played No Man's Sky, uh, but I'd love to hear your take on it. He also says, uh, this is from Stig again, uh, that Stalker 2 is, uh, is back in production and Rage 2 has been leaked, or information about that has been leaked. And then finally, uh, this is the Neo Geo Mini. This is a video game console, of course, celebrating that uh, SNK uh, system. It's, it's going to have 40 Neo Geo titles on it. It has a 3.5-inch display, meaning the games can be enjoyed, no need to connect to a TV. Uh, the size of it is, fits perfectly in the palm of one's hand. So. I know some of you guys, every now and then I hear from somebody raving about their uh, Neo Geo arcade experience. And it looks like this is a good, good way to get recapture some of that magic. Anyway, not sure how much it costs yet, but keep an eye on that. All right, I think that will do it for the news. What about that ale of the week? All right, so for this uh, week, I've got a Pinot Suave. This is a... <laughs> It's kind of weird to say, Pinot Suave. Uh, who are you, Pinot? <laughs> Anyways, Belgian style ale, uh, sounds good, uh, with Pinot Noir grapes. Hmm. Aged in a French oak barrel. So let's see, we've got Belgian style ale with uh, uh, Pinot Noir grapes in a French oak barrel. So I, uh, that's uh, bound to be interesting, let's put it that way. And this is by the Deschutes Brewery. Out of, it doesn't really say where they're out of, and I forgot. Uh, uh, just, I wish I could remember, but it's not there. And I've really been staring hard at this label. It's almost impossible to make this out, but there's a little bit of information about it. It says, if I'm reading this right, 11.8% alcohol, which would definitely put it on the very high, <laughs> very, very strong indeed. That's probably, I guess, from those uh, uh, the, either the barrels or the, the wine. Let's see. It's uh, Belgian-style ale aged in French Pinot Noir barrels with Pinot grapes. Uh, the results, notes of the grape, berries, and fruit, along with light malt and a hint of caramel. Uh, just a hint of the caramel. <laughs> Woo! Uh, anyway, I'm excited about this. Uh, no idea what I'm getting myself into, but uh, let's get this thing open and see what it's all about. All right, so I'm hanging out here with the Pinot Suave here in this uh, rather excellent drinking horn. <laughs> oh, that'll get your attention. Oh, you definitely smell that uh, those grapes. I mean, it smells exactly uh, like a red wine, maybe even a port. Uh, it smells really, really good, though. It's not like a bad aroma. It's just uh, strong. Uh, it's kind of growing on me. It's very, very thick, too. I don't know if you can see this, but it's almost like a syrupy like a consistency to this like the bubbles are just kind of frozen in the, in this glass uh, very interesting i don't often see that usually the bubbles are kind of whoosh, whoosh. Uh, but <laughs> not not the case here uh, anyway no idea what this is going to taste like so well, let's just give it a go oh, 
<laughs> that is good. I'm going to try that again. Yeah, I don't know how they did this, but it's uh, it's pretty much exactly like they described on that. Uh, you taste the grapes. It's kind of like a nice uh, champagne, maybe. Uh, the flavors are nicely balanced in there. You can definitely taste that sort of belgian -y ale. Uh, and sort of in the aftertaste, I guess. But going down, it's kind of this sweet sort of grape, almost like a, uh, like a grape juice. Uh, and then you get those sort of Belgian ale flavors after on the tail end of that. Uh, what was it, like 11-something, almost 12% alcohol? I don't taste any alcohol in this at all. I mean, this is, uh, this is really incredible. And then uh, let me try it again. I'm going to see if I can taste for those uh, uh, that sort of barrel aging process. Yeah, maybe a little bit. If you're really looking for it, uh, you can sort of detect that sort of smoky flavor from the barrels. But uh, really what you taste, I think, are those grapes, the Pinot grapes, I suppose. Sort of a nice champagne-like flavor. It doesn't really taste much like a wine. It's really more of a champagne. Uh, but with the Belgian ale uh, flavors on the back end, uh, really sweet, smooth, uh, good uh, consistency on this. I have to say, I really, really like this one. Uh, it's probably one of the best I've tried in quite a while. Uh, Pinot Swap, they shoot brewery. Uh, no question, full five out of five drinking corns on this. It's really just amazing. I'm going to try it one more time here. Ah, that is some good stuff. Uh, so I don't know if you'll be able to find this uh, where you live, but if you do, uh, <laughs> Matt Chat recommends it. All right, let's wrap it up then with a quote. And I was looking for quotes by actual pirates. <laughs> There's quite a few. And man, these are some great quotes, but uh, I settled on this one. And unfortunately, it's uh, we don't really know who it is. It's an anonymous pirate. Uh, but when he was up on the gallows, about to be hanged, I suppose, uh, they asked him if he repented or not. Did he repent his sins? And uh, here's what he says. Yes, I do heartily repent. I repent I had not done more mischief, and that we did not cut the throats of them that took us. And I'm extremely sorry that you aren't hanged as well as we. <laughs> oh, what a great quote. Oh, man. I love pirates. I love uh, Pinot uh, Suave. I definitely love uh, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. Uh, so anyway, thank you for watching this episode, and see you next time. It was divine providence what escaped us from jail. And I'll say it was me being clever. Ain't that right, Gucci? Well, how do you know it weren't divine providence what inspired you to be clever? Anyway, I ain't stealing no shit. It ain't stealing. It's salvaging. Since when did you care? Since we're not immortal no more. we got to take care of our immortal souls. You know you can't read. It's the Bible, you get credit for trying. Pretending to read the Bible's a lie. That's a mark against...